I'm going to 100% complete the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection, which means getting the Platinum Trophy for Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and Revelations. Let's begin with Assassin's Creed 2. Now I originally played this version in 2022 and earned 27 trophies. So the first thing I did playing this again was go for the collectibles, starting with collecting all 100 of the feathers. I had already found 72 from playing before, so I only had 28 left. Still, going for these feathers was as fun as waiting for the PS4 to finish copying. There it is, the last feather. In memory of Petrush, I'm, I'm butchering his name. Yeah, pronouncing some of these names, trophies, and locations was a struggle. However, that wasn't the case for the trophy Mythmaker, which you get by finding all eight statuettes in Monterey Journey. There we go. One. Oh, that's the last one, Mythmaker. There are also 20 glyphs you can find. Scanning one will give you a series of puzzles to solve. In the first one I did, I had to find a piece of Eden hidden somewhere in three different pictures. And while searching for the last one, I also discovered that I needed to book another visit to the opticians because I was struggling to find it. What's up with this walking stick? Oh, I see it. Oh my days. There it is. <laughs> they had to give me advice for that. A piece of the puzzle. I might need to book that Specsavers trip. But before booking that appointment, I solved the rest of the glyphs to unlock the trophy Vitruvian Man. And yeah, I used a guide for this. I can see the stars. That's it. The last one. Vitruvian Man? What? Let me help you with that, mate. It's Vitruvian Man. I don't know what was more difficult, trying to solve the puzzles before looking up a guide or my attempt to pronounce that word. Regardless, with the collectibles down, the next trophy I wanted was show your colors, which is for wearing the Adatory Cape in all five cities and the mountains. You get the Adatory Cape after you put all 100 feathers in the feather chest in Maria's room at the villa. And wearing the cape outside of Monterey Journey makes you instantly notorious. Show your colors. After that, I got the trophy Perfect Harmony for tinting my clothes with wetland ivory and wetland ebony. Oh, there it is, Perfect Harmony. And I unlocked the trophy Art Connoisseur for buying a painting from Florence and Venice. Now, some of this game's trophies are tied to completing specific side missions. One of them is Macho Man, which is for finishing one of the beat up events. They are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is beat up a woman's no good husband. You're not supposed to do that. Oh my days. Well, he won't be going to twirl no more. <laughs> I personally think my way is more effective, but fine, let's stick with the fist. Macho Man. Steal Home is another side mission trophy. You get it by winning one of the races where you must beat a thief's time by running through all the markers within the time limit. Done and dusted. Steal home, let's go. Another thing I'm stealing is lives for the trophy Street Cleaner, which is for hiding five dead bodies in the same haystack. <laughs> Street Cleaner, hey man, very, you get paid very well for doing that kind of job. How do I know this? Well, I watched John Wick. Anyway, another profession that pays well is a doctor which is also the trophy for performing an air assassination on a poisoned NPC. Doctor. Yeah, that's the cure right there. I mean, he ain't suffering no more, is he? <laughs> and joining him will be more guards because the trophy no hitter is earned by killing 10 enemies while remaining in conflict without being hit. To get this, I bought smoke bombs, then went to an area with a decent amount of guards and got their attention. Once I had at least 10 guards attacking me, I used the smoke bombs to stun them and got to work. There it is, no hitter. And then for the trophy, Monsieur Sandman, you must stun four guards at once by throwing sand in their faces. You can learn how to throw sand by completing the training in unarmed combat under special moves from the trainer in Monterey Journey. Yeah, yeah, enjoy that sand. Messia, oh, Monsieur Sandman. I, I butchered that. It was a valiant attempt. But anyway, I also learned the sweep attack move by completing the training for long weapons. I did this to earn the trophy sweeper, which is for using this attack to sweep five guards at once. 
Yeah, I got it. Sweeper. Cleaning the streets. After putting the broom away, my next goal was to complete the assassin tombs. There are six in total, but I had already completed one as part of the story, so I had five left. These tombs have you doing climbing puzzle challenges to obtain a reward. I got through these without too much issue, and while traveling to each tomb, I was also pickpocketing people for the trophy Kleptomaniac, as that requires you to pickpocket 1,000 florins. However, this seemed to be taking 1,000 years, so I looked online for a faster method and found that you can bribe a herald for 500 florins and then steal the money right back from them. In other words, I could have saved time getting this trophy by doing this twice. Crazy. Ah, there we go. Kleptomaniac. Nice. Then after finishing the last two tombs, I decided to celebrate by performing a leap of faith from the top of Giotto's bell tower in Florence. Let's do it. High dive. I also realized I still had one more side mission trophy left, which was for completing my first assassination mission. So I quickly got that. Done and dusted. Assassin for hire. Yeah, good rates as well. I had only one more trophy left before the platinum. And that trophy is Podesta of Monterigioni, which is for reaching 80% of the stronghold's total value. So in this game, you gain the ability to upgrade Monterey Journey. You can do this by opening shops, renovating buildings, and acquiring paintings, items, and equipment. The higher the value, the more money you also make. Now, I've been working on this since it was first available, and even still, I was only at 52% of the total value. So I've got to increase it by 28%. I wasn't sure how long that would take, but I had just enough money to fully renovate the three buildings I had remaining. Will it be enough? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay. There, there we go. Got the trophy. Master Assassin. There's the platinum. Whew. Assassin's Creed 2 is done. Now it's time for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, where I got my first three trophies for watching the intro, completing sequence one, and finding a secure place to re-enter the Animus. And then after starting sequence two, we can now leave the Animus. I did this to get the only two missable trophies in this game. One is Dust to Dust, which is for finding one artifact in 2012. There we go, Dust to Dust. The other is Mailer Demon for accessing your email in 2012. Let's check my emails. Mela Damon. Moving on to sequence two, memory seven, I completed the first of six Romulus layers. These are similar to the assassin tombs in AC2 and finishing each one unlocks a trophy. Not too long after, I completed sequence two. Now in sequence three, I got an unexpected trophy. So remember the Herald trick I did in Assassin's Creed 2? Heralds are used to reduce notoriety, but I wasn't trying to reduce my money. So I did the same trick again in this game and that actually unlocked a trophy. Oh, trophy, easy come, easy go. So this game introduces optional objectives and missions and completing them gets you 100% sync. I managed to do this for all the ones in sequence three, earning me the trophy perfect recall for achieving 100% sync in any sequence other than sequence one, plus the trophy for beating the sequence. Now sequence four, memory five, is where we gain the ability to recruit assassins. You can then use them in combat and level them up to be more powerful. This is my favorite feature of this game. And once I recruited my third assassin, I unlocked the trophy, Brotherhood. Oh, trophy, Brotherhood. There's also a trophy for getting a recruit to the rank of assassin, which is the max level. The fastest way to do this is to send them on contract missions. So I'll be working on that while doing everything else. In the meantime, I got my next trophy after finishing sequence four, memory 10, where I had to destroy the machine gun. Then after completing sequences four and five, I looked at the trophy list again and realized there was a trophy that required me to have 100% sync in this game, which meant getting 100% in all story missions. So I decided to replay the memories I didn't receive 100% on, and upon replaying my first memory, I unlocked a trophy. Whoa, trophy, deja vu. Once I was done replaying memories, I jumped back into the story, and during sequence six, memory one, I got the trophy airstrike for killing 10 guards with a single arrow storm. Arrow storm is an ability that's unlocked once you have recruited six assassins and it can only be used when these three gauges are full. Oh, trophy airstrike. After that, I finished the last four sequences and then got through over 17 minutes of unskippable credits to earn the final main story trophy. 
the credits is over and knife to the heart with the main story finished the next thing i did was complete the da vinci disappearance missions this was dlc in the original game but it was added to the trophy list of this game now the real fun begins with the collectibles and like assassin's creed 2 there's a trophy for collecting all of the feathers but fortunately instead of 100 i only have to collect 10 this time yes the, all the feathers in memoriam the glyphs also make a return with new puzzles to solve so i began tackling that and while traveling to each glyph i was also renovating every building i came across this eventually got me the trophy home improvement for renovating five buildings in the antico district oh trophy home improvement quarantine lifted that was the last one and the trophy i don't know what i'm supposed to say okay so i looked it up and if this morse code translator is correct then it translates to i am alive interesting but going back to the game after solving the glyphs i took a little break from the collectibles with the trophy tower offense which you get for burning all 12 borgia towers tower offense then after sending my recruits on missions to level up throughout the game, I finally had some of them reach the max rank of assassin, earning me the trophy, welcome to the brotherhood. We are assassins. I'm a proud assassin. Nothing is true. Everything, Everything is, permitted. is permitted. Welcome to the brotherhood. The last set of collectibles I need are the 101 Borgia flags. These basically replace the feathers from Assassin's Creed 2 and are just as fun. Thankfully, once you complete the game or collect 25 Borgia flags, you can buy maps that show their location in each district from the art merchants. However, 18 flags can only be found within the six Romulus layers. And like I said before, completing each one unlocks a trophy. And I had five left. So while getting through the layers, I was also collecting flags. Yeah, the last one, capture the flag. Yes, all shrines completed and 100%ed. Shrines are what you discover at the end of the layers, but with that and the collectibles down, destroying all the war machines is my next goal. I've already destroyed the machine gun, so that leaves the bomber, the naval cannon, and the tank. I went for the bomber first. Oh, with the little, okay, that badass walk. Let's go, boom. So this game has four types of guilds, each with his own set of challenges. And for the trophy show off, you need to complete 10 of these. I finished my 10th challenge by raising five recruits to the rank of assassin. Although I didn't even realize there were guild challenges when I got this. Oh, trophy, show off. Then jumping back to the war machines, I destroyed the naval cannon next. The naval cannon, cannon is gone, splash. Hearing the word splash reminds me of Magikarp and Phoebus. I used to play a lot of Pokemon. I mean, I was messing with IVs and doing EV training, but enough about that, or oh, I'll be here all day. The last war machine I need to destroy is the tank. The 100% sink in this one requires you to avoid taking damage while in the tank. Now I've read that this one was hell for some people, specifically the final part of this mission where you have to fight two tanks at the same time. So when I got to that part, and took damage, it looked like I was about to experience the same thing. No, I got hit, damn. All right, let's redo, gotta redo this thing. However, my second attempt went a little differently. To break down my strategy, I kept constantly moving in one direction while shooting and they just couldn't hit me. Oh, is that, oh, I did it, okay. Hell on Wheels is complete. Kaboom! Zombies, zombies vibes. If you know, you know. But if you don't, then what you should know is that all the war machines have been destroyed, like all the zombies after picking up a nuke. So now, it's time to get all the other trophies. Starting with the trophy Fly Like an Eagle for jumping off the top of Castel San Angelo with a parachute. You get the parachute from Leonardo after destroying all four war machines. Then to get to the top of this place, I replayed sequence eight, memory two, as it starts with you climbing up it already.
He didn't use the parachute. It didn't come out. <laughs> Give me the apple. There we go. Fly like an eagle. That <laughs> I guess not drop like a stone. The only things I'm about to drop onto are guards for the trophy special delivery, where I need to perform a double assassination from a parachute. Special delivery. Now I'm on a horse for the trophy Grand Theft Dressage, which is for stealing five horses from their riders while staying on horseback. There it is, Grand Theft Dressage. You know, they should make a game called that. It could be like GTA, but have horses instead of cars. Wait a minute, let's just move on from that. For the trophy spring cleaning, I need to kill a guard with a broom. Damn! Spring cleaning, yo. <laughs> then for another trophy, I need to kill a guard with the bag that drops from a lift. I got him. <laughs> going up. <laughs> oh no, he's going down. And he will be joined by the five thirsty Harlequins found around Rome because I need to beat up all five of them for a trophy. Mm, mm. Get down. That's the last one. Clowning around. We don't do that around here. Instead, we go for the trophy serial killer which is for getting an execution streak of 10 kills. To find enough enemies, I replayed sequence two, memory six, and fought the Romulus Wolfman at the start. To get an execution streak, you first need to kill an enemy. Then after that, you can target and continuously kill enemies with a single hit, provided you don't get hit. Serial killer, let's go. There's also a trophy for throwing a smoke bomb, a heavy weapon, and a long weapon more than 10 meters at a guard. Boom, there it is, strong arm. The Trophy Perfectionist is achieved by earning three gold medals in the Animus Virtual Training Program. There are four training categories, free run, stealth assassination, locate, and combat. I start with combat and the flawless hidden blade training. For this one, I need to use my hidden blade to kill as many guards as possible without getting hit. And to get the gold, I need 20 kills. But let me tell you, getting up to 20 was a real challenge for me. Oh my days. Oh my days indeed. Especially when after many, many attempts, you finally get to the final stretch, but fall at the last hurdle. Just one more kill? Darn it. Okay, I got this. Yes. There we go, come on. Let's go, finally. That was beating me up. After that less than flawless experience, I switched to free run and did short courses one and three for the other two gold medals. For these, you have to get through all the gates within the time limit. And I'm glad I switched because I had a much easier time with that. There, perfectionist. Woo! Now it's time for a more relaxing trophy. To get it, I have to throw money in a well. Make a wish. Your wish is granted, sweet. I use that wish to help get the trophy, the gloves come off, which you get for winning the highest bet at the fights. There are five fights you must do, with the final one requiring you to beat up five mercenaries within 40 seconds. And you get the trophy after winning the highest bet on the final one. Yes, there it, done. That's it. The gloves come off. You see these hands? They can do a lot of things. And one of those things is getting me the trophy High Roller, which requires me to win 10,000 florins from the Hazard minigame. I had no idea what I was doing here. I just wagered the max amount and rolled the dice until I won enough. I heard your boy was working with the Maestro Architect. Nice. Yes. High Roller. Okay, I've saved the longest trophy for last. I mentioned it briefly much earlier. It's the trophy for obtaining 100% sync in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and the Da Vinci Disappearance. Now I've already got 100% sync in all the story missions, Da Vinci missions, War Machine missions, and Romulus Lairs. However, I still had a bit left to do. So I started by getting 100% sync in all six Templar agent missions, then all 12 assassination missions, all 10 thief missions, and last but certainly not least, all 10 
Courtison missions. Okay, that takes care of that. That's it. The last Courtison assignment mission. And that should, yeah, there it is. And Julius Caesar, the Platinum. Let's go. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood has been conquered. Now it's time for revelations. And I started by completing the story and unlocking all the story related trophies. The only trophy I got that wasn't story related was Overkiller, which is for assassinating 50 guards with the hidden blade. Oh, trophy, Overkiller. Now while playing through the story, I was also making sure to get 100% sync in every mission, which eventually earned me the trophy Fond Memories for achieving 100% sync in all sequences. Revelations. The story is complete. And now the collectibles. The first collectible trophy I wanted was capped for collecting all 100 Animus data fragments. Finding 50 of them will make the rest appear on the map, but it doesn't save it from being any less tedious. That's it, very last one. Capped, now that was tedious. And because I've collected at least 25 fragments, I can now buy a treasure map from the bookshop that shows me the locations of all 10 memoir pages. There it is. Nice, worth a thousand words. What isn't worth a thousand words are the Desmond sequences. There are five in total, and you unlock them by finding five, 10, 15, 20, and 30 data fragments. The sequences play as first person puzzle platformers, and yeah, I did not enjoy these at all. They weren't too long though. And that's the last one. Are you Desmond Mouse? No, I'm not. After that shocking revelation, the next trophy I went for was Holy Wisdom for completing the higher Sophia challenge level, which you unlock by finding all the memoir pages. This is similar to the tombs and lairs from the previous games. Also, finishing it rewards you with some armor. Oh, you got some. Oh, this armor is cold. Okay, I like this. Sweet. Holy Wisdom. With my sick new armor, I began working on the trophy Pyromaniac, which you get by completing all eight bomb missions. Now, while on one of these missions, I found an opportunity to get the trophy Lightning Strikes, which is for killing five guards in five seconds using only your hidden blades. Body them. Let's get out of here. Oh, lightning strikes. Got that. There we go. Pyromaniac. Now we move to kleptomaniacs. But not from me, because for the trophy Fast Fingers, I need to loot 50 dead guards with the thief looting ability. You unlock this ability by completing the second set of challenges for the Thieves Guild. So I was just going around killing guards until it popped. Ah, there we go, finally. Fast fingers. We have been menaces in these streets. Yes, we have. And will continue to be. Because that ability is a great way to earn passive income. But after that, I took my talents to the skies with the trophy show off, where I need to parachute onto a zipline. Then five minutes later, I got the trophy Armchair General for controlling all cities except roads simultaneously in the Mediterranean defense. This is where you can send your assassins on missions to gain control of cities and level up. Oh, I got the trophy Armchair General. Oh, control all cities, nice. Now I'm taking care of pests for the trophy Mousetrap where I need to kill five guards with a scaffold after they have been stunned by caltrip bombs. That's it, Mousetrap. Does anyone remember that game? I never played it, but the adverts always made it look cool. Reminiscing aside, the pest problem continues as I need to kill five guards while being hidden by a smoke screen bomb. I can see you. <laughs> you ain't John Cena. Another thing I can see is a great view of the sea because you get a trophy for parachuting from the top of the Galata Tower to the Golden Horn River. Almost flying. Now I'm quickly climbing for the trophy Spider Assassin, which you get for climbing the higher Sophia from the ground to the top in under 25 seconds. I 
Ah, there we go. Spider Assassin, done it. Speaking of Assassin, this game has a trophy that requires you to have seven trainees reach the rank of Master Assassin. The process for this is much longer than in Brotherhood. You first have to train them to hit level 10. Then you must assign them to a den and complete the first part of a Master Assassin mission with them. Completing it allows them to reach level 15, the max level. And once you get them to max level, you must finish the second part of the Master Assassin mission with them so they can finally hit Master Assassin. In other words, it's a grind. So I began focusing on getting them to Master Assassin. And while doing that, I got the trophy Bully for finding and beating up Ducho. You know, that one guy. He just randomly appears during or after completing certain missions. Bully! Nice. I haven't played that game yet. The next trophy on my hit list was Iron Curtain, which you get for performing a perfect den defense without using the cannon. Den defense is the tower defense minigame, and you're given a tutorial on this game in sequence two, memory six. So I just replayed that mission and avoided using the cannon this time. Let's go, we done it. Well, I did it. Iron Curtain. After that, I replayed sequence one, memory five, to get the trophy Silent But Deadly, which is for killing three guards simultaneously with the throwing knives. <laughs> wow. Silent But Deadly. Now for the trophy tax evasion, I need to get my money back from a Templar tax collector. The way I got this was by waiting for the bank deposit in the area where the Hagia Sophia is. Then once I got the deposit, it took about 50 seconds for him to spawn and around 50 more seconds for me to catch him. Give me my money back. Tax evasion. Let's go. I'm going to Monaco. But before booking that fly, I finally got seven assassins to reach the rank of Master Assassin. And getting seven of them to hit Master Assassin was also the last challenge I needed to complete for the trophy A Friend Indeed, which is for completing all guild challenges from a single guild. The Mentor, let's go. And A Friend Indeed. After obtaining those two trophies, I replayed the Fespian Part 2 Master Assassin mission. Why? Well, this mission has a lot of guards to help get the trophy Monsters Dance for having a guard incapacitate three civilians while being poisoned. Ah, right, there it is, a monster's dance. I also use this mission to obtain the trophy Moshpit, which you get for having 10 guards poisoned at the same time. The last miscellaneous trophy I needed was Craft Maniac for crafting 30 bombs. Now I tried doing this at the crafting station, but after making a lot more than 30, it was clear that this trophy wasn't going to pop, like the popcorn kernels at the bottom of the bag. So I eventually switched to adding bombs via the weapon wheel and finally got it. Finally, Craft Maniac that actually worked. All right. All the miscellaneous trophies are out of the way. Let's move on to the Lost Archive DLC. So remember the Desmond sequences? This plays like that, except the puzzles are a bit more challenging. There are several memories to complete, so I began by getting through them, unlocking story trophies, while also finding all 20 of the Decipher fragments. Oh, that's the last one. Find all pieces. Very nice. The loop. Done all the memories. And now that I've completed the story and found all the fragments, I can replay memory five to get a new ending. Breaking the loop. I broke that loop, but I'm about to enter another one because for the next trophy, I need to complete the Animus testing sequence in memory four without failing. This is the start of the testing sequence. The first challenge is getting past the moving lasers. Wow. <laughs> Yo, that was terrible. I don't know what I was doing there. Luckily for me, I learned my lesson. And on my second, well, third attempt, I got past that part. I made some decent progress. However, that progress was halted at the section where you're supposed to rise to the top while avoiding lasers. No, oh, no. <laughs> I fell off. Wow. The annoying thing about this 
is spending about a minute to get back to the testing sequence. And what's even more annoying than that is spending three more minutes making it back to the Ryzen laser part, only to fail again and again. It actually took me a few more attempts to return here again. The question is, will I make it this time? Whew, made it this time. The answer is yes. And after making it, I took my time I maneuvered past many more tricky obstacles to finally break the loop. Oh, I've done it. Yes, let's go. Impress Warren Vidic. Vidic. Whew. I ended that loop only to immediately enter another one because for the last trophy in the Lost Archive, I have to make it across the River Styx in Memory 7 without failing. First, I need to get to the River Styx. Luckily, there's a shortcut that can take you there much faster. Once you load in, walk directly straight to the ledge, look below, and you should see the outline of a white particle field. All you have to do is make that landing. It sounds pretty simple. However, there was just one problem. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I could not consistently hit the landing. Now, when I did hit the landing to get to the river sticks, making it across was the next challenge. You're supposed to use the jump pad to jump your way across. However, the only thing I was jumping towards was the menu to restart this over and over again. You see, landing on the jump pad was never stable for me, like a table with uneven legs. So I looked online for more tips and read that switching to the long pad after landing from a jump was much more stable. Using this new tactic, I was able to make it across and finally put an end to the lost archive. Whew. Let's go. Cross sinks or cross sticks without dying. Just one more trophy left. And that trophy is Sage, which is for collecting all 25 available books. 18 can be purchased at the bookshops, but getting them all will cost nearly half a million florins, provided you have renovated bookshops to get a 15% discount. Yeah, there's a reason I saved this one for last. To get enough money, I sent assassins on missions and waited for the bank deposits. It still took me a few hours to acquire enough money to buy the 18 books. The remaining seven books are found by completing the book quests located on the map. These, thankfully, are not as long. This should be the last one. Sage. Finally. And the Conqueror. Let's go. Assassin's Creed Revelations is done. The Assassin's Creed Ezio collection has been conquered. And now, I'm a master assassin. That was fun.